So morning everyone, I decided to paint this little slug, not a slug, a snail from my garden. I'm not a fan of either of them, uh, there's some toys lying in the view, but um, you know, I decided to paint a few flowers and uh, in the garden, from our garden, but also some of the animals like the robin, I want to paint wobbles, uh, I want to paint quite a few birds, we even have a little witcher bird in the garden. So I decided to paint a few of them, but for this one I wanted to make it a little bit more, just add a drop of interest to this painting. Yes, I made a little video of it, but I want to show you what I did. Um, I used some of Harvest Moon watercolors, um, her gold star, the, uh, it's like a glitter, and as you can see there are tiny tiny little particles of the glitter. It's not a solid gold, but it just gives it a little bit of an interest there. So I will show you how I did that very soon. And here is the famous snail that I painted for this tutorial. This one was so high up on the by the pool pumps. It was near all of the pipes on a little wall there. And I'm going to show you which is the one, um, the photo that I took that I painted for this tutorial. I don't like them, um, I'm not a fan of them, I don't mind them but I'm just not a fan. So this is the one that I painted and I left those little lighter part as light as possible. Just leave your paper as light as you can. I'm going to use my Mung Your Watercolor set. It's a lovely set, I bought it a while ago and these are the little colors that is currently in the set. A few of them I don't use often. But most of them I do. And the brush is the Aqua Elite brush from Princeton. It holds quite a lot of water and it has a very nice tip. And these are little cards, like tiny little postcards that I bought recently from an art store. I will link everything down below for you if you want to see everything that I used. I was going to um, pop that paper down there with two glasses of clean water move everything out of my way so that I can start. So I want a darker mix like a sepia or some paints grey. So the paints grey is in that round little holder there on the top and then this is the sepia mix. So I might change, chop and change between these two darker mixes but you can also mix your own black. But this is a beginner's tutorial so I'm going to keep it very simple. I'm going to wet this whole painting and it's not going to I'm not going to wet it too much so there won't be any puddles and then I just move it around. I want all of this water to soak into the paper before I drop in some most of the colors. I don't want the color to go absolutely everywhere. And then I just touch it on the edge there and it will soften. And you can just move it around into the parts where you want a little bit more of a darker mix. At the moment this is one of my favorite brushes that I use. It is the Aqua Elite brush from Princeton. It holds enough water, just the perfect amount for my type of painting or my style of painting. And the point is very important for this painting that I'm painting today. So I want something with a very nice tip so that I can get into all of those tiny little grooves. There's going to be a lot of detail. Lots of tiny little spots that I have to get into. Again, I just wet the paper. There's a little bit of pigment on my brush. So I keep it very watery so I can go back later and darken all of these sections again. So the minute I drop in the pigment, you're either going to have too much water on your brush or you're just going to have the perfect amount of water on your brush with pigment. So I'm trying to control the water and pigment ratio on my brush. Thank you for the tea, Abby. And by doing that, I won't flood my paper with a lot of pigment, especially with these dark mixes, because I'm, you know, you can so easily just flood your paper and mess it all up, and then it's dark, and then it soaks into your paper. And especially this paper that I'm painting on currently, it just absorbs all the pigment. So I'm very careful and just use the tip of your brush to create those little markings on the neck of this snail. 
So this is the first layer that I'm going to paint and then I will go back later and just darken it again as soon as it's dry completely. I need to dip my brush in my candle. So let me just move it out the way. And I picked up some of the yellow okra. Just want to drop it in there so that I can mix it. I want a light and brown mix as well. And then I just wet my brush and move the pigment around. I want to make sure that the paint is dry by the neck area so that this pigment doesn't go in there. But it doesn't matter if it goes in there or if it flows in there. I can just remove it very quickly. And then I just create this shape of the shell. So I already follow this shape, adding in all of the detail. And then just a drop of the paint grey mix in there. I like these tiny little holders. I bought them from a Chinese store. You know, they normally use it for the swear sauce. They're very lovely to use for your watercolours. Especially these little dark mixes like paint grey and your yellow if you want to keep it separate from all of your colours. So I have quite a few of them. And I keep my paint grey in that little holder all the time. So I don't mess up all of my other paint. And especially your yellow, if you don't want to, because yellow can get dirty so quickly. So I keep that separate as well in a little holder like that. So I leave some parts light. So I'm going to use the paper for my highlighted sections. And I just wiggle my brush around. I want to create a 3D rounded look. Still want to keep it easy and simple for beginners. And then I just put it down and soften those little lines. I don't want to wet my paper too much because I didn't stretch the paper at all. I can turn it around and manipulate it while, you know, if I wanted to turn it a little bit to the other side, I can just do that. So it's a lovely paper to paint on and it's fun, you know, fun little projects. This is, like I said before, part of my garden project my garden collection that I'm busy painting so these are the one, uh, ones that always eat all of my flowers I painted that hibiscus flower recently and one of these uh, snails and some of the slugs got all of those little flower leaves I'm going to go in with a little bit of a darker mix now again not too much water on my brush and the pigment is not too watery either so the paint is quite Thick, not too thick but I would say it is more creamy so I'm already going in with some darker mixes now just want to add the reference photo there for you so you can see what I'm doing And I have a cloth next to me or tissue paper always handy so that I can immediately dab up some of the excess pigment just in case I have too much paint on my brush or too much paint on the paper. That way I can just quickly lift it out uh, with my brush and I just dab it on this little towel. And just darkening these little sections. And this is the little robin that I painted, part of the garden collection. I haven't made a video of the, I didn't record the whole process, but I think I will paint it again so that we can record it and make a tutorial out of that one. I think it will be fun. I do have quite a few lovely birds in the garden and they've been here ever since we've been here, the families. So they are so used to us now. So if you want to know all the colors that I use, just press the more button and it will expand all of the detail below this video. It depends if you're on a phone or an iPad. It might be either on the right hand side or on underneath this video. So that I can explain to you everything that I use just to make it easier.
if you're interested in that. So again, just softening these little hard lines and creating a little bit more detail. And I'm going to paint a shadowy section as well, just to, just to, it will, it will just, you'll see, it just brings out the snail because the paper is white. I want to paint like a shadow. Again, just darkening, but I still want to leave some of the highlighted sections as light as possible. So I'm just very careful. I don't want to paint into that. Darkening these little markings at the bottom. So I'm going in with a much thicker consistency of paint now. Again, just darkening. I'm waiting for every second, <laughs> every part to dry completely before I go in with the next layer. And it's very important to leave the highlighted sections on the spot, especially for the snail, because I really want all of those lighter sections that are wet to stand out. <laughs> They're not, mm, yeah, not, not my favorite. Like I said, it's not my favorite uh, little thing in the garden. But here we are. This is how far we are. And I'm going to start by darkening all of the other little sections now. And this is what I mean about just moving the little painting and the paper around so that I can get into the different parts. So as I'm darkening all of these little tonal values, you will see that the lighter sections that I left light will now stand out even more because I just glazed over the whole painting with clean water and all of those lighter little sections will just stand out a bit more now. Following this shape all the time. And can you see that lovely tip of the brush? By the way, I'm not sponsored by uh, Princeton at all. Uh, one of my patrons sent me this brush all the way from the UK to test and try. And I absolutely love it. This is a number three, just in case you want to know. I normally use a five. So the cool memory brushes that I normally paint with, um, you know, they're also different. Uh, different. They have also a point but a little bit more rounded than this one I would say you can see the mix is a bit more browner than what it was before dabbing it on the paper and if you like these videos and you like my channel Please subscribe to my channel because I will be posting a lot more videos, especially part of my garden collection in the future. If you like and share my video, it just helps our channel as well. So a bit more of the Payne's Grey mix with Burnt Sienna. I now picked up some Burnt Sienna. I don't necessarily have Burnt Sienna on the manual set of my watercolor so I just use some of my Windsor and Newton burnt sienna set paint that I have next to me. I find I need a little bit more of a red mix just to tone down the, the paints gray mix. The paints gray is also not in the manual watercolor set. But there is other colors uh, like a black in so I don't normally don't paint with just black. I normally mix a little bit of blue. As you can see, my paints green. There are loads of colors in there. A little bit of blue, a little bit of green, a little bit of purple. I don't just want black. And by mixing just a drop of a different color with the black, it just changed the little color, the pigment of the paint gray. And I just keep on following the shape of the shell. So I painted a few shells as well. If you're interested on my YouTube channel. And then there are full step-by-step -step tutorials on Patreon. Mm. 
a little bit more of the paint grain mix. Now you're going to see the darker I go in with the tonal values on and the neck of this snail. All those lighter little parts will just shine through. All the highlighted sections will stand out. And my paint is again not watery, it's quite thick. And I'm darkening this section and I leave a highlighted section on the part there as well. Just to make it look like it's not part of the paper, but that is part of the body. And then darkening these little sections and then I just go in and wet it if I have too much pigment on my brush. Darkening these little sections as well. Just want to close this door because someone's making a noise. might pick it up but it's fine <laughs> and then the robin comes uh, to the glass and just look at me watching me because they are making a nest right now in the garden so it's so cute um, and I'm, I can see them right through the glass and she's watching me or he's watching me so they keep on coming to check on me I might just steal the eggs but I'm not going to <laughs> They are so adorable. I just recorded her watching me so I will post this at the end of this video so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. It is a spot where I also we created that beautiful little water fountain or that beautiful pot of mine that cracked in half and my husband, I said to my husband I'm, I was so sad so he said to me he's gonna you know do something with it and he did and he created this little water feature for me and now all of the moss and everything is growing there and it's just beautiful now the robin decided to make a nest in the fern and i can't water that fern so i have to go in when they collecting little birds and oh, not birds oh my gosh i hope they don't collect any birds but when they collect worms and insects for uh, you know their babies to eat they are quickly going to just water the fern obviously very careful not to wet the nest at all but uh, the fern, I don't want the fern to die because it is so beautiful. So I just take something with a snout, like a water can, and then I water them quickly and then I leave it because I don't want them to leave the babies and leave the nest. I will be so sad. But again, just darkening all of these little parts of the shell again of the snail. I wanted to say slug again. And you can see just by darkening all of these sections how the white highlighted parts stand out. Mr. T is lying on the bed here in the sun. Soaking up the last little bit of the afternoon sun. So just go in and darken the sections if you want to paint a <laughs> snail. Uh, so that you know you can see it just creates a different look to the shell now i'm going to go in and wet the spot because i'm going to paint a shadowy section there and because the paper is white it will just helps the snail to stand out on the paper and make it look a little bit more 3d or realistic i'm not painting a photo a realistic painting here we're just painting a little snail and I still want it to look 3D, um, but not flat on the paper. And then we're going to dab up the excess. This is the snail. And I'm going to use a water glaze to just go over the whole snail. I make sure that this painting is completely bone dry before I do this. So I don't want to disturb all the paint that I already painted at the bottom. And then I just use a tissue paper to dab up all the excess water on this side as well. And then just tissue paper to dab up the excess water. Because I don't want all of that pigment to lie there and just flood all of those highlighted sections. I held the camera in my hand. I'm so sorry. It was a little bit uh, wiggly. Um, but now I'm going to go back and just darken certain sections again. Make sure that this is completely dry now because we don't want that black pigment to flow into all of those wet sections even though we dabbed up the excess water with tissue paper 
it's still wet. If I have to go in immediately afterwards and it's not dry, it black will just go absolutely everywhere and flood my whole painting and I don't want that. And now I use the tip of my brush just to darken all of these little sections that I think needs a bit of darkening. This will all make such a difference to the painting just by darkening certain parts. It will push the lighter parts forward and the darker parts backwards. So it will just create a... Because the paper is white, it will just create a little bit more of a 3D look. So, or 2D look if it's not 3D. But it will just create a... You know, the, it will not look like it's flat on the paper, like a flat painting. I want it to look like the snail is walking on the paper. Not really on the paper, but it is on the paper. Just wiggly bits on those little sections there. And I just take my time because I don't want to paint in those lighter sections. I want to leave it as light as possible. But if you want to and you paint it over those sections, you can maybe get away by painting in a few highlighted sections with a gel pen. If you want to create a little bit more of a highlight on certain parts but I'm not going to use the paints because I'm just going to leave it like this I think it's fine I don't mind it looking like this again taking my time just to darken darken certain parts and after this I will make sure that I dry the painting completely and then add in the glitter paint and then I'm done still follow the shape of the shell yes Mr. T I know. And then I just take clean water and I just soften certain sections, dab it up with my tissue paper. I want to neaten up the edge of the shell there. And this is completely dry now so that the pigment won't go all over the white. I just take my tissue paper and then soften and lift out some of the excess water. Yeah, again, it's always handy to have tissue paper near you. And here we are. I'm going to paint the shadowy parts a little bit darker. Just fix that. I want to create a little bit more of a looser effect even though that looks okay I just want to change it a little bit and darken it slightly so I just use my brush clean water and for this section I really want to make sure my water is clean so I just change the water and I'm going to soften it I'm going to use my scrubber brush because I want to soften those little markings that I can see there and even though it's stained the paper already, I'm just going to soften it because I'm going to add a bit more of the paints grey brown mix on the paper. So I just use the brush, scrub it a little bit so it's lighter, and then I'm drop in some of that pigment. I'm going to go against the body, just dab it in. So there's quite a lot of water on my painting, on my paper right now make sure that your painting is completely dry before you do that because you don't want all of this to obviously flow into your painting now and you can see there are quite a lot of water on that section there i'm going to move it around i'm going to use a bigger brush just dab it on the tissue paper make sure it's clean all the pigment out 
and by doing this I'm just going to make sure that there's no hard water lines or water markings that will form once it's completely dry and here is our final painting I'm just going to add a little bit of also glitter paint and then it is done if you like this tutorial please press the subscribe button and the bell button so that you can be notified every time we upload a new video here is the little robin in the garden that was watching me while I was recording the voiceover and here is the final painting when I added in all of the glitter so I just picked up some of that glitter paint and then I just dropped it in on the bottom of the shell there and as you can see that watercolor markings that we painted in earlier it just dried so beautiful on the paper I actually like the way it turned out and I'm just taking it everywhere I'm holding the camera on my hand while I'm doing this quickly so I'm sorry for that but this is the final painting and I hope you enjoyed this.